Good evening and welcome along. It's Stephen here from the LFC Day Trippers. Um, you're joining us here listening to this in relation to the Sean Cox interviews that we have lined up over the uh, coming weeks or in the past weeks that we've done them, should I say. Um, tonight's interview is a very special one for us, though. Um, we got the privilege to sit down and talk with Sean's wife, Martina. Uh, she welcomed us into her home um, and we got to... I suppose get a, a feeling for where things are at, not just with, with Sean at the moment in his recovery, but also with Martina and the family and um, what they have ahead of them. And I hope that our interview can give everybody who's listening an understanding of just how much of a challenge is in front of Martina, the family and Sean. Um, everything we're doing is with the hope of trying to raise some funds as I'm sure lots of other people have done and we know they have and other people will in the future but every little helps so we really hope that our chat with Martina can give an understanding of what's re required by the family there's so much needed over the next 12 to 18 months in terms of the care that's required for Sean the rehabilitation that's required for Sean for those who don't know, both within Ireland and outside of it, Sean's currently in a rehabilitation program with our only rehabilitation hospital in the country. Um, the problem there is that there's there's a, a limit of, of 12 weeks on any rehabilitation program for any patient that enters the hospital. And Sean's coming close to the end of, of that time, which means that the family are left in a scenario whereby either the rehabilitation halts or they find a new facility for Sean outside of the country. And that's something that's going to require a lot of money, uh, a lot of help, and a lot of, um, what would you say, I suppose, uh, a, a lot of commitment from the family, both Martina, her kids, um, Sean's siblings, Martina's family, everybody involved, friends. It's, it's a huge undertaking. And all we're asking from anybody who's listening to this is to give their time, have a listen to what Martina has to say, understand where things are at for the family and please if you can um, click on the link below the interview which has a range of interviews we've done with ex Ireland and uh, Liverpool players all of who have given up their time free of charge in order to try and help with the fundraising efforts and there's some really good interviews in there some some fun ones some enlightening ones um, some informative ones um, and, and we really just hope that this can help to bring some additional funds towards the situation that Martina, Sean and their family are in. So I hope you enjoy and without further ado, I give you our interview with Martina Cox. Okay, Martina, I really appreciate you taking the time to meet with us tonight. Thank you. Um, Martina, I suppose what we want to do here um, and as, as part of the interview um, series that we've been doing with lots of ex-players, it's, it's really been to help with the fundraising for Sean and the family because we know that there's a huge amount ahead um, for, for both Sean and and yourselves. Um, one of the things that we want to do tonight in, in this being the first part of the, of the series of interviews is to give people, I suppose, an indication because people have heard about what's the, the, the awful tragedy that happened to Sean, the incident on the night. I think lots of Liverpool fans especially will be very familiar with everything right the way through the court case to, to where we are today. But I suppose not everybody knows, you know, Sean as a person and, and the family to an extent. And what we wanted to maybe try and show is how, you know, this young man, a very, you know, vibrant and active man um, has had his life changed through no fault of his own. And what a big and, and long road ahead there is for the family. And there is hope, you know, there is a, a, an opportunity for him to to get a good quality of life back. But but that's going to take a lot of help and support and most of all money to do Absolutely, it yeah. um, and and that's what we want to do we want to give people an idea of of not just what was you know Sean's life on a day-to-day -day basis beforehand but where things are at now and what's required going forward because if, if one thing I've seen over the years is that Liverpool fans and football fans can often you know forget about their their rivalries and situations like this and and really get behind uh, you know Irish fans will will know what it's like to get on that plane at half five or six o'clock in the morning you're up from three in the morning or four o'clock to go over and watch a bloody game of football um, and that's something that Sean's done tons of times from from what I understand um, but let's go back to, 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 to many years ago. How, how did the two of you meet? We actually met through Sean's sister. We both worked for Dunn's Doors. Oh, so, right. yeah, so we just kind of, we were friends. And then 
the magic happened. The magic happened, yeah. <laughs> as it does. The rest is history, as they say. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And in terms of the background, you have, you have three children, is that correct? Yeah, we have three kids. Uh, Jack is 21, Shauna is 20, and Emma is 17. So <laughs> two in college and one doing their leave and start this year. So yeah. it's, a, it's going to be a tough year. Absolutely, know. absolutely. And, and, and still very young, you yeah, know. Um, They're all at home, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a, in one way that's a that's a tough ask for you to be trying to keep them on the on the level with with school and college um, and and to to do everything you've been doing. It must also be a comfort to have them. Around yeah, I mean you. it is. It's great having them around. Yeah, but it's it's been tough for all of us. Like it's it's our life has completely changed. You know. Absolutely. You know the focus is is on Sean, and it's just nothing is is the same as as it was previous. You know. Yeah. Well, I, I can imagine anything you do you know where it would have been a case if you just didn't have to think about it be it be it you know going here going there making a a, a, a plan to do something everything sean has to be at the forefront of everything yeah you, you everything know. is planned around well i'm going to the hospital tonight or no i can't do that because you know does this go on or obviously i have to do a lot more with the kids now because i don't have sean Absolutely. there with me so yeah it's just it's kind of juggling everything really you know you're, you're the taxi run yeah. full time the whole yeah time. at the minute yeah and and sean had siblings as well did he yeah he's got uh two sisters and two brothers right okay yeah. so there's a decent sized family and yeah and yeah and the support's been there from they've them. Be, yeah absolutely they've been amazing like it's it's hit them really hard as well of you know course. because they're they're with me you know doing the visits and you know they've been there from when Sean was in the Walton Centre, we kind of done a rota of, you know, different siblings came over and back because we were there for four and a half weeks, you yeah. know. I, I know he was a, or is a massive um, Liverpool fan. Um, how long had he been a fan of the club? Was he a regular visitor? Oh, regular. I mean, he's he's been a supporter, I think, since he was a kid, yeah. you know, and a as regular. Long as, you know. as long as I know him, and I know him a long time. <laughs> Um, he um, he would have travelled back and forth with either his brother, his son Jack, or, yeah. or some other friends. So it, it was a regular thing for him, you know, um, maybe three or four times a year, possibly. Yeah, yeah. And, depending and on what was going on, what matches there were, you know. Absolutely, and and you know, from from our point of view, um, myself and Phil here, we, we know exactly what that's like. You know, we're we're the LFC day trippers. We we took the name because of you know we we day trippers are mocked a lot of the time by by the locals for for only swanning in and out for games you know but we know what that's like it's 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 an undertaking it's a commitment to yeah. do that three or four oh which i wouldn't think shouldn't have, wouldn't have thought twice about doing it you yeah. know we, well, we yeah. jump at the chance when yeah. you get the tickets if if, yeah. if there's tickets if you're in you got your tickets you'll sort your flights or you'll get yourself over that's there it, yeah. um but but you know football isn't his only love you know he's a he was a very active part of the community here yeah, he was obviously very involved in the the GAA. He was yeah. the chairman for a couple of years. He was a secretary. He, he's basically been involved in um, in the club for many years. He trained Jack at one stage. He's also um, a keen golfer. Um, and he had recently taken up running the last couple of years, which he was really enjoying. Yeah, I'm looking, so, looking yeah. at a picture of him here, getting yeah. himself ready in, in for, so the, for the night So basically, yeah, he was always doing something, you yeah. know. Always on the go, and yeah. and 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 obviously well well known and well well loved around the area as well. Yeah, with absolutely. That sort of involvement. Yeah, he would have because of his involvement in the um, the GA. Yeah, he he would have been very well known. Yeah, you, know? you can't you can't be in the GA in these towns and, no. and not be known by everybody. No. It's just it's par for the course. Um, I suppose what what I want to ask you now is is the night that the the incident occurred. Um, you know, it's 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 Liverpool versus Roma in in April. Um, you know, like any of our families, you're you're there just expecting them to go off to the game, enjoy it, and and come back as normal. How did the news break to you that that this had happened to Sean? I was at home in the house uh, with two of the kids, and I was just in the kitchen, and I got a phone call from my sister in law to say that Sean had been hit in the head, and that he was on his way. He's been rushed to um, Aintree Hospital by ambulance with Martin, his brother. Um, at that stage, I didn't really kind of realize the the enormity of the situation until I got a phone call from the nurse at Aintree to say that, you know, Sean had been rushed in and that he had a bleed on the brain and bruising and that he was going. He's been transferred to the Walton Centre, which was next door for emergency life saving surgery, basically. And yeah, that was I mean, it just it was like just changed everything. 
Absolutely. That's, that phone that's, call. That's yeah. the moment. Your, yeah. That phone call changes your life. Um, are you on a plane, you know, next plane out? or The next morning. It was too late. Yeah. Again, you know. You can only, there's yeah. only so many flights yeah. per, per day. Yeah. So the next morning, myself and uh, Sean's brother, Peter, we took the, the early flight out and just went straight to the Walton Centre and straight in to see Sean. And I mean, it was horrific. That, that you, that's you know? ultimately when he's at his worst in in the sense of you see him i, I take on a ve- it he was on a ventilator yeah. yeah i mean he was just you know in icu just completely hooked up to all sorts of machines and just you know his head was obviously badly bruised his face everything it was just horrific you know and are you are you told at that point we don't know what the situation is we just have to wait and see or well, we were kind of basically told that the next 24 hours were you know going to be you know, critical very it crucial. was critical, yeah. and you know, and then we were told that he would be sedated for the next for another twenty four hours, and then they just kept kept extending it because they realised that you know his his injuries were so severe, um, and he he ended up being sedated for two weeks, and then after that they took the sedation off, and we waited and waited for him to wake up. And he didn't really wake up until we kind of more or less got to Bowman. So we were four and a half weeks in um, in the Walton Centre. Uh, just as he got home, basically. Just he kind of started flickers of, of his eyes opening just at the very, just before we were transferred back. Yeah. So one of my questions was, I suppose, in these situations, I can only imagine and I've not been in this. You know, people say, I know what you're going through, but they don't um, the vast majority of the time. Um, but I can only imagine that it's an hour a day a week, a month, that's how you have to break things down into, you know, it's, you're, you're breaking everything down into watching that gradual progress. But yeah. for you, whilst he's in the, the Walton Centre, not much is changing. There was so, nothing, so literally you're... nothing. We just sat there for hours on end, talking to him, yeah. playing songs to him, just holding his hand, just willing him to wake up. But, yeah. you know, he just wasn't ready at that stage, you know. Yeah, and, and listen, you know, all of that may play a part in, in the difference between somebody waking up and, and not waking up or coming, yeah. you know, coming around. So, so um, it's, it's, it's always lovely to see when a family are around somebody like that in, yeah. in that situation. Um, I suppose fr- from, from getting him back to Dublin then um, and getting him to, to Beaumont, you know, anybody from, from Ireland will know that is the, the specialist hospital in the country for, for head injuries. Yeah, and it's a centre of excellence in, in, um, in Dublin. Yeah. Yes. Um, how, you know, how, what was the quality? I won't say what's the quality of care because I think we, we've, we've excellent staff and I don't want to speak for you, but what's, what's the, the situation like then as he's, as he's brought in to, to, to Beaumont? Um, well, I mean... Basically, th- there was no surgery. It was just he was really being looked after um, because uh, everything had happened over in um, Liverpool. So it was really kind of he was being monitored. He was in in a high dependency ward. Um, he subsequently was moved from high dependency to a slightly lower dependency. Um, and he got some some level of um, physio and um, occupational therapy and speech therapy but it was quite limited okay. given the resources that are in Beaumont Hospital. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, in, in terms of where we're at now, um, Sean was moved to uh, the rehabilitation centre in Dunleary. You know, what, what's, it, what's his current rehabilitation schedule at the moment? You know, what, what's, what's a, I know it's, it's not easy to say, but what's a general day in, in, in the life of Sean at the moment? You know, what's, what, what are they doing for him there at the minute? Well, he basically has, he's got physio, he's got occupational therapy, speech and language, and he's doing music therapy as well. Um, so it's all kind of scheduled out with breaks in between because, he, you know, one of the things with brain injury is that the fatigue is absolutely huge. So imagine. like yeah. they will, he'll do, say, physio and then they'll maybe put him back to bed. He'll get a rest and then he might do speech and language in the afternoon and maybe physio or um Music the therapy, therapy after that, yeah. yeah. But it's pretty much, you know, it's it's, it's a fully packed day for it's Sean. It, yeah, it is for him. It is, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, given his injuries yeah, and that, absolutely. you know, um, and he does, um, he, do, he has like a motoped thing that they use as well. It's to kind of get his his legs moving as well. Okay, to so build, he does help build the muscle yeah. without putting his body under too much strain. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I suppose one thing I want to drill into this because because in Ireland, you know, Dunleary is pretty much the main rehabilitation centre. There's not 
There's not much other than that available. Um, and it's a limited amount of time that anybody can spend in that rehabilitation centre. And, and that time is coming towards an end for Sean. Um, so, so one thing that's very important as part of this and as part of the fundraising efforts is for people to understand that a huge amount of what's being raised for him is to allow him to continue the rehabilitation that he needs because the difference in what can be achieved for him with proper rehabilitation over a 12 month period let's say compared to just being sort of said there you go Sean that's your rehabilitation section of your of your recovery Mm. that we provide for you and after that you're on your own Mm. it's massive isn't it yeah I mean like you know for Sean it's um, basically rehab is approximately 12 weeks and after that then you're basically on your own Mm. And for Sean, like, that's not the end of the road for him because his recovery is going to be a very long recovery. So he needs um, he needs the equivalent of a, a Dunleary. But unfortunately, there is nothing else in Ireland. So that's why we're doing the fundraising, because we're looking at, you know, there's a lot of different options out there. It's either the UK or somewhere in Europe or possibly the States. Right. The States being probably what we've been told is that is probably the best scenario, but we just we're looking into all those areas at the minute. Well, you have to, yeah, you have to yeah. take into account the the personal aspect of it yeah. as well, because as we said already, when talking about your family, you have still got young children. You've your children who are in the midst of their their own life from a college and school yeah. perspective, and and it can't be easy, as you say, for the idea of a rehab center in America plus trying to yeah. manage a family of three here as well. So yeah. well, I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously the timing is kind of, I'm going to have to watch the timing because I've, one of my daughters is actually doing her leave insert. Right. So she's doing her mocks in February and she's, you know, her full leave insert in, in June. So, but obviously we have to get Sean, you know, of he, course, he's, a, he's a huge priority, a priority as well. So yeah. it is a bit of a, a juggling act, but that's what we have to do. That's, that's the pressure we're on. Yeah, absolutely. Under, and, you know? and and for anybody who's listening to this, um, there there is a link at the bottom of the interview, um, where we have got our interview packages, and which is ultimately the the basis of this whole fundraising exercise is to allow people to go in and listen to the interviews that we've done with with ex footballers, which all proceeds of which will go towards the the fundraising efforts for the family. So if you if you are listening to this, we would ask that you please click on the link at the bottom and and make sure that you you do get involved and and there's some excellent interviews there with some some great players all of who um wanted to show their support for Sean and the family um as part of that. Um when when we look at I suppose um what's after that you know I'm, I'm sat here in 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 your living room and, and thank you very much for having us we, we we've we've jumped in and ruined your your evening but uh we we are very appreciative of your time and um, there's a huge amount to be done in this house as well and, and it's a lovely home but it's it's no home is ever equipped or designed to to deal with the i suppose scenario that you're now in yeah i mean that's you know that's obviously something we're going to have to look up quite quickly because you know Ultimately, we want to get Sean home, but we're going to have to get a do it. There's going to be a massive undertaking, obviously, downstairs to, you know, to, to make it accessible for Sean and that it's it's right for him, for his needs and for the family as well. Of course, it still yeah. has to be, uh, it has has to be, be a home, home yeah. to, to live yeah. in, um, but also has to have the, mm. the capabilities for him to, to be able to, to, to live his life here. Um, we spoke about his involvement with the community. On the whole, how have things been for you guys? You know, I, I can only imagine, and from what you said to me before we started the interview, there's been a huge amount of support um, for the family. But you, you also paid the price for that support in, in a way by by never being able to just have a normal day where, where somebody's not bringing you to, to do this or do that. Or you having to look into, as you say, the, the different rehabilitation centers or or, you know, who's going to do the work on the house or all these things, yeah, you know, there's just a lot. There's just a lot of extra work. But that's, you know, it's just part of it. Life has changed. It's, it's changed forever. It's, it's changed for everybody. Yeah. Not just me, the kids, you know, Sean's brothers and sisters, everybody. Um, but we're just kind of muddling together and doing what we have to do. But, you know, this this is this is what we've been faced with. So we just have to get on with it, you know, and do what we have to do. And in terms of of that rehabilitation, you know, what is what is the difference that that would make for Sean? You know, in, in terms of him getting those twelve months, I want I want to emphasize to people who are listening yeah. that how important that is. Well, you know, Sean needs that the level of rehabilitation that he has gotten done. Larry has been really good, but he needs to continue with that to get him to the best, to the optimum level that Sean will will reach. 
and he won't reach that unless he gets that you know really good rehabilitation yeah absolutely yeah i think i think i've gone through most of it with you i don't want to make it a really long interview for you you know i'd like to make it brief and and ultimately get the message across of of what's needed and why it's needed and then just let people get yeah. involved and with that in mind martina let's let's just remind anybody who's listening here um because we really do appreciate your time and the the effort you've gone to to meet with us and talk to us uh, this evening ultimately the whole point behind all of this fundraising is to ensure that sean is able to obtain the best possible rehabilitation that he can and and as we stand as we've already covered here i just want to reiterate it sean cannot receive that care in ireland it's not a matter of money it's not a matter of anything else unfortunately we just have the one rehabilitation center here in ireland you only get a set amount of time in that rehabilitation center and he is now reaching that point so what we want to do is we want to ensure that people understand the main basis behind this and all of the fundraising is to get sean the best possible care outside of ireland which is what's going to be required so for anybody's listening today we want to say thank you for listening. We we appreciate it, um, and we really do ask you to get involved. We 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 can only ask that you help with the fundraising that we're trying to um, manage at the moment, and also the other fundraising that's going to be going on over the next few months. Um, we we hope you've enjoyed the the interview. I know I have. It's been a pleasure to talk to to Martina this evening in understanding um, what her her family and Sean is going through, and we can only hope that through all of our efforts, we're able to give Sean the best possible chance at a recovery and the care that he deserves. So thank you very much for listening and please do get involved, download the interviews with the former Liverpool and Ireland players that we've we've uh, put together and try and help this family and Sean um, receive the, the treatment that's required. Thank you very much.